All right, you ready to hear God's word? All right, let me just ask you, how many of you were here last week? Did you, did you really enjoy uh, Amber's message? How many of you really enjoyed her that? She set the tone for this, this full life series in a great way, talking about really what it looks like to be spiritually healthy. And of course, that's foundational to you because the truth is that we're all, um, we're, we're made up of a, a soul, right? A body and a spirit. And all three are really, really connected. And so what we want to do in this, this full life series is to talk to you about how to, to really walk fully alive in all those areas. And so I want to thank Amber for setting that tone last week of talking about how vital it is to walk in spiritual health. So what I want to do today is I want to just continue in that vein. And I want to talk to you about this idea that, that full life is, it, it is possible for every believer. And... If you've been around here long enough, you know that, that it really hinges on the scripture of, in John 10, verse 10, that says, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. And I really believe that Jesus, uh, he, he meant that. How many of you believe Christ meant that when he said that about you? The rest of you don't believe it. Well, we that believe it, we're going to walk in it. Amen? And maybe you'll catch up later. Amen? So Jesus said it, and he, if, he didn't, if he didn't mean it, he wouldn't have said it. And so here's, here's how we're going to say this. As, as I've been looking through the scriptures, I've been praying for this, through this as on a number of years, I've come to the conclusion that, that you can have full life in every area of your life. That it's not just confined to your spiritual life. It's not just confined to your physical life. It's, it's the whole of you, mind, body, and spirit, fully alive. Can I get an amen this morning? And so if we understand the perspective, because I, I want always, anything that I share with you, I always want to give it to you from a biblical perspective, because if I can't back it up from scripture, I'm not going to preach it to you, all right? And so you can rest assured that I've prayed and pondered over this as I'm ministering to you, as I'm, I'm delivering this to you. And so what I want to do is I want to take you all the way back to the beginning of time in the Garden of Eden. How many of you have ever read that, the Genesis account of the creation? If you haven't, it's fascinating. Genesis chapter 1, we see how everything started unfolding. God created everything out of nothing. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? This God that we serve, there was nothing. Say nothing. Out of, everything that you see, God created it out of nothing. And what do you say? Every time, every day that he created, six days he created. At the end of each day, what did he say? It is good. Plants, the mountains, the moon, the sun, the stars. But something happened on the sixth day. What was it? God created Adam and Eve. Didn't he not? And what did he do? He said, I'm going to breathe life into you, and you're going to become a living soul. Now, this is what, this is what separates you and I from all of, the other, all of the other creation, from the animal kingdom. Now, I know there's people who would... Uh, People who are smart who would say that there's a connection between us and other animals. I'm here to tell you, we are a separate creation apart from any other creature. Amen? We have been set apart for that. And here's the reason. God loved you so much that he wanted a personal relationship with you. Amen? And so we see it unfolding at the very beginning of time. We see Adam and Eve, a special creation. God breathed into them and they became a living soul. Say alive. Were they alive? Were they fully alive? Absolutely they were. And in the garden, there were three things that were true. Number one, they had perfect fellowship with God. The Bible says that they walked with God in the cool of the day. In other words, anybody ever taken a stroll in the morning? Nice, cool, just, a, just the air is crisp and cool, and, and you just love to take that walk. Well, they took that kind of walk, but they had God walking right beside them, and they had perfect fellowship with him. Isn't that great? They were fully alive. Something happened. 
if you skip from Genesis chapter 1 to Genesis chapter 3, you'll notice that the enemy comes along and deceives them into thinking that everything that God has with the relationship that they have with God, it's not enough. And so what happens? He convinces Adam and Eve that they need more. There's something that God's holding out from them. And they make a decision to eat the fruit. And the Bible says because of that, that relationship, that perfect relationship they have with God was severed. And now the Bible says they're enemies of God. That's bad news, isn't it? Can I declare to you, though, that because of what Christ did on the cross, that relationship can be restored. Amen. Number two, in the garden, there was perfect health. They weren't sick. Amen. But again, because of the fall, because of the disobedience, the Bible says from that day on they were cursed. And there was, uh, since from that time on, there's been disease, there's been death. All, all the stuff that you see, all the terrible stuff that you're watching unfold before us are all a result of Adam and Eve's fall. I got more good news for you, though. Christ came to redeem your health. He came to restore your health. Not just, not just in your physical body, in your mind, your will, your emotions. Every part of you whole and fully alive. Number three, in the garden, there was perfect provision. They had everything they needed, right? God perfectly provided for them. But again, because of Adam, Eve, Adam and Eve's disobedience, something happened. From that time on, they had to toil the ground. By the sweat, he's told them, by the sweat of your brow, you're going to bring in what you need. Can I tell you that God came to restore provision to you today? All three of these encompass this idea of what full life in Christ looks like. And so what I want to do today is declare to you he came to restore it. And it is possible for you to walk fully alive in your relationships, in your health, and in the stewardship of your purpose. Did I mention to you that God created you on purpose for purpose? Turn to your neighbor and tell them that. God created you for purpose. On purpose, for purpose. Now, I can already kind of, some of you maybe start to say, well, pastor, I, that sounds good and all, but you don't know what I'm going through right now. Listen, don't misunderstand this message. I'm not one of those who's, who is a pie in the sky. The moment you receive Christ, nothing ever bad happens to you. That is not realism, amen? That's not what we're facing right now. If I was preaching that, that would mean I would have my head buried in the sand. But I'm here to tell you, in the middle of the disappointment, in the middle of the trials, you can be fully alive. Jesus said it this way, John 16, 33. Those things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. Say peace. Now, peace is an outcome, right? What's it an outcome of? It's an outcome of trust in God, right? So he says, you may have peace. In the world, you shall have what? It's a promise. In other words, bad things are going to happen. I know that sounds bad. But be of good cheer. Why? Why? Because I've overcome the world. In other words, it doesn't matter what's going on around you. It may be chaos with like it's been this week when they're storming the Capitol building. But I'm here to tell you, in the middle of the chaos, you can, be, you can have a smile on your face. Why? Because everything that Christ purchased for you at the cross is, is right in your grasp. Amen. So these things I've spoken to you, be of good cheer. And so... This idea of fully alive in your, in your health, in your relationships, in your stewardship, of your purpose, that's what we want to focus on this month. We want to focus on your health. And as I said just a few minutes ago, Amber did a fantastic job of setting that tone, of talking to you about prayer and fasting and spending time in God's Word. Those are keys to spiritual health. But the truth is, they're not just keys to spiritual health. They're keys to your health in general, Amen. But I have to tell you, 
that unless you make this really, really important decision to place your faith in Christ's finished work on the cross, you can't live fully alive. It's impossible. That's the foundational part, is that you believe that Christ came, He died on the cross, and He rose again. When you place your faith in Him, there's something happens. You pass from death to life. You, you, you switch from being an enemy of God to a son or daughter of God. That's good news this morning. Yes, it is. I'm no longer at odds with the God that I offended. That's foundational here. But from there, for you to experience full life in Christ, there have to be some investments that you make. Amen. There's a responsibility on you to make investments. Salvation's free. Christ paid for that. How far you go in this experience of full life in Christ is partly up to you. You have a responsibility. And so when you make investments like praying, you expect to draw closer to God. You expect for, for peace to come. You expect for things to happen as you're praying. Amen? As you're fasting, you're expecting what, like what, what Amber said last week. Yeah, you may lose a little weight, but that's not what this is about. This is about connecting with God and seeing things differently. You can expect when you open up His Word to be reminded of who Christ is, of His power in your life, His victory in your life, and also who you are. So all of those things, prayer, fasting, Bible reading, they're investments. And you're expecting a return. Here's how it looks with, with this whole idea of, of mind, body, spirit. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Here's what Paul says. Now, May the God of peace make you holy in every way. And may your whole spirit, say spirit, and soul, and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. Now, how many of you are looking forward to the day that you see Christ face to face? Is he coming soon? I, do, I believe he is. But in the meantime, what happens? How are you living the rest of your days on planet earth? I believe that's what he had in mind here. Because remember it says, kept blameless until the day of Jesus Christ. So what is it that he's saying? He wants you, he wants you fully alive, mind, soul, and body until he comes. Amen. And so he's focusing on the entire person here. God is committed to helping you in the middle of all of this. Thrive. Here's how John prayed it in 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. He says, Beloved, I pray that you may what? Prosper in all things. In some things? What does all mean? All. He says, I want you to prosper in all things. How? Just as your soul prospers. What do we say your soul is? It's your mind. It's your will. It's your emotions. Again, that's what sets us apart, unique from other things, is because you have the ability to reason and to think and have knowledge. That's what your mind does, right? Your, your emotions, you're able to feel. What would life be like if you couldn't feel? Boring. Amen? So God wants you to be fully alive in your, in your mind, in your emotions, and your will. What is, what's your will? Your will is your intentions. What you've decided you're going to do, God wants to be Lord of all of those. He wants you to walk fully alive in all of those. And as we deal with these over the next four weeks, I want you to lean into this. Because today I want to talk to you about this between your ears, your mental health, your mind. I can testify that 2020 had an impact on me. My mental health, as I reflect over 2020, I suffered some loss. Not a whole lot, probably not as much as nearly as much as in all of you. But it still impacted me. Anybody there? Has anybody been impacted mentally by 2020? If you hadn't been, I need to sit down and talk to you. You need, you need to get up here, and I need to sit down there. 
So it's had its, it's had its impact. Sheltering in place. Not getting to go to church for two months. Not even getting to go out to eat for a little while. Not being able to hang out with friends. It had an impact. Amen? Losing your job because of, of COVID in the economy. Watching our loved ones struggle physically with COVID-19. All of these have taken their toll right here, haven't they? Am I the only one? As a matter of fact, there's a study done and, and right around the time, about a month into the, the, the COVID-19 virus, uh, Qualtrics and Mindshare Partners concluded that two out of every five participants reported a decline in mental health since COVID-19. Anxiety, stress, fear of unemployment, being, being less busy, and working from home were the top five reasons for this de decline among 2,000 individuals they surveyed. KFF polling data suggests that social isolation is connected to poor mental health. 47% of those sheltering in place reported a decline in mental health as contrasted with 37% of those who are not sheltering in place. Can we thank God that we live in a state where we don't have to sit there all the time in our houses? Anybody glad for that? If we have anything to be thankful for, that we're not having to shelter in place. And so we need to be in prayer for those places like California and Minnesota who are still can't get out of their houses, who still can't go to a restaurant and eat. We need to be in prayer for those people because it's affecting them mentally. You know how it affected you. So here's, here's some, some thoughts on that. The church of Jesus Christ, we have an opportunity in this, in this age, right? In this season to be salt and light to people. Think about that for a minute. Think about the, those who, are, who aren't, that you've seen before in this room that aren't here right now. Not because they don't want to be. And they're having to watch online. Can we reach out to them? Can we say a quick phone call and say, hey, I'm praying for you. I love you. I'm thinking about you today. Folks, this is what they need. And it's an opportunity for the church of Jesus Christ we must learn to rest in the sovereignty of God and remind others to do the same. In this historic time, we have a divine opportunity to encourage those around us with the truth that we know. The hope is in the gospel of Jesus Christ. For us as believers, his sovereignty, we understand he's in control. I will rejoice in the God of my Savior. And so as we talk about this idea of mental health, I want to give you some practical things to help you. If you will put these things into practice, I believe you can walk fully alive in your mental health. But it starts with this, this, this organ that's, in your, that's protected by your skull, the brain, right? It's the control center of the body. If it's unhealthy, guess what? The rest of you is unhealthy. And so we have to make some investments in our brain health. Anxiety and stress are some of the biggest reasons people suffer from mental health, mental uh, unhealth. And so let me tell you this. You need to strive for a healthier brain. Avoid anything that hurts your brain. Now, stress is a, in doses is good, right? So let's say you have something good that happens in your life, a, you know, the birth of a, a child or something like that. That's a stressor, but that's good stress, right? And so your body pumps that, those endorphins and those things, and, and you're excited, right? That's okay. Or if something negative happens, you know, you know you're in a traffic jam or something, you hear bad news, it's okay for that to have shots. But if you're, you're under chronic stress, 24-7 under stress, then it becomes negatively affecting your, your mind, your brain. And we have to find ways to combat that and to, and to get to the place where we can overcome that. So chronic stress, health issues such as high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity are all bad for the brain. I read something this week that as you grow, as you, if you're obese, as you continue to get fatter and fatter, your brain gets smaller and smaller. Anybody ever read that? Isn't that crazy? That should be right there, motivation for some of us to, to make some changes, right? Especially your pastor. So here's some some practical ways that you can walk in, in health and fully alive in your mental health. Number one, Amber's already said it. Let's read God's word daily. 
Get into his word. Why? Because God's word reminds you of some things. He re it reminds you of how powerful God is. It reminds you that God is in control. It reminds you that God is your provider. It reminds you that God is sovereign. It reminds you that God is good. Can anybody attest to God is good? Righteousness. Here's what the Bible says. I read it this week. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. You can't know that unless you read God's word. You can't know what he says about you. In 1 John chapter 3, it says, Behold what manner of love that the Father has lavished on us that we can be called the children of God. If you didn't read the Bible, you wouldn't know that. So I can be reminded every day how God feels about me. How he's working in my life every single day. All because I make a habit and a discipline of opening up God's word. Here's what I found. I read this a study. It says Bible reading along with other forms of community and discipleship. Such as going to church or participating in a small group. I'll talk about that in a second. Appear to contribute to people's sense of well-being and happiness. Now, this is a guy from the director of human flourishing program at Harvard University. Folks, can I declare to you the value of being a part of a church? A community of faith? How it contributes to your mental health? So, here's what I'm going to just want to present to you some things God's word says about your thoughts. Because this is really what this is about, right? Because when you, have, when you start having thoughts... Many times, the thoughts that you have are wrong. Can I get an amen? And you've got to find a way to do something about that. So here's what Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 says. I want you to, this needs to re, be really, when it, in terms of your mental health, this might be your, your anchor scripture, okay? Watch what it says. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. What does it say? Fix your Thoughts. In other words, laser focus your thoughts on this. Here's, what, here's the things you need to be thinking about. What's true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Is that helpful advice for anybody this morning? Here's the problem. If, if I'm watching the news all the time, and I'm listening to talk radio a lot. And I'm reading the newspaper a lot. Guess what? I'm sorry, guys. But you're not, when, you're, when you're taking that in, you're not fixing your thoughts on things that are, are honorable. And, and I'm telling you, folks. So fix your thoughts on the right things. Watch what he says in Isaiah chapter 26. You, you will keep him. Here's that word again in what kind of peace? Perfect peace, who's what? Who trusts in you, whose thoughts are fixed on you. On who? On yourself? No. Where does my gaze go? I will lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? Where does it come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. So what's the outcome of making the investment of fixing your thoughts on God? Perfect peace. I believe that in this crucial time, that biblical meditation is probably one of the most beneficial things that you can engage in. Pastor, what in the world is biblical meditation? Anybody got that question? How do I do that, Pastor? All it is, is fixing your thoughts on what the, the Bible says. So let's say you take that one passage there, fix your thoughts. Okay, what does that mean? What things are lovely? And you begin to chew on that. You begin to rehearse the, the words of God, the, the scriptures, over and over again. It's a rehearsing of what God's word says because it's just like an animal chewing, chewing grass, like a cow chewing grass. What does he do? He keeps chewing until it's broken down and the nutrients get down deep. That's what biblical meditation is. And I'm, I'm telling you, let me challenge you to practice that on a regular basis. Because here's, this is, this is science, right? Neuroscience teaches us that every time you have a thought, your brain releases chemicals that make you feel good or bad. So you have an option with your thoughts. Correcting negative thought patterns is an effective treatment for anxiety. They're using it to treat anxiety disorders and depression and relationship problems, even overeating. So here's what we do. 
You've got to start taking a, be having an awareness of your thoughts. Start noticing the things that you're thinking about. And even go so far as to write it down. Write down what your thoughts are. Then you ask yourself, one of the questions out of Philippians 8, 4, 8, is it true? And if you're, if you're, what you're writing down, you're saying there's no way that's true. Then why would you dwell on that? If it's not even true. Amen? You have the truth. So what do you do when something's false? What do you, how do you combat that? You combat false stuff with truth. Where do you find truth? In God's Word. You notice how all of this continues to go back to God's Word. Biblical meditation. If they're not true, replace the false thoughts with the correct information. Where do you get the correct information? From God's Word. Here's something else. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. We demolish arguments and every pretension that it sets itself against the knowledge of God. And we, what do we do? Say it out loud. Say it loud. Take captive every thought. Take captive some thoughts, every thought, and make it obedient to Jesus Christ. In other words, I cannot just let my mind wander and race all the time. No, I am in a, in a moment of let me bring my thoughts under captivity to Jesus Christ. Your thought life makes all the difference in the world. Because some of you ruminate. You know what that word ruminate means? Again, it's almost like that idea of chew and cut, like a cow. So you, but you're ruminating on the wrong things, right? You're ruminating on, oh man, oh man, that bank account. Ooh, I don't know where I'm going to pay that bill. Or you got that doctor report. Man, that doesn't look good. Or that relationship. Or Whatever it is, and you begin to worry and stress and have anxiety, and it's impacting your brain. It's, in, it's impacting your mental health in a negative way. So replace those with what is true. What is, and ask yourself the question, this thought that I'm having, what's true about it? What's honorable about it? What is right about it? What's just about it? You see, why don't you follow me? So this question you begin to ask yourself from Philippians 4.8 begin to help turn. And give you an about face of your thought life. Romans 12, 2. Here's an outcome. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So, what happens when you begin to think rightly? transformation. It's not just positive thinking, folks. It's a transformation. The Holy Spirit does a work in your heart. Every time you open up His Word, there's an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to get a hold of your mind. Amen. Can I tell you, you can't forget that He is your paraclete. The Holy Spirit is walking beside you every single hour of every single day teaching you the Scriptures. That's the beauty of being filled with the Holy Spirit. So you're not in this alone. Amen? Number two, stay connected to your closest relationships. Here's what, can I give you a fair warning today? Make sure the people you're surrounding yourself are building you up, not bringing you down. Anybody been around some negative people lately? The world's coming apart, the sky's falling. If, you, if, you have, if that's the people you're surrounding, you maybe need to, maybe to make some new friends. Amen. Stay connected to the closest people because these are people that will, as Galatians 6.2 says, they'll share your burdens with you. Did I mention that you're not alone in this? Can I get an amen this morning? Are you with me today? Did I mention you're not alone in this? You can share each other's burdens. And it says, in this way, obey the law of Christ. What's the law of Christ? You know it already. What is it? The great commandment. Love your Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And, come on, help me. And your neighbor as yourself. So you're not in this alone. Share each other's burdens. Surround yourself with people. Stay connected to your closest relationships. Can I say this about the church? The church should be a place of safety and community where those who are struggling can be honest. 
I heard a story this week from our men's group. Those guys are building community together every Monday night. You know what they're doing? They're sharing. They're not afraid to, to, to share this, There's what the things they're struggling with. Why? Because that's a safe place. All of our groups should be a safe place. This church is a safe place to be honest about the things that you're struggling with. Why? Because in James 5 it says, Confess your faults one to another that you may be healed. No more masks. Amen. No more facades. No more coming into church acting like you've got it all together. No, we don't have it all together. Your pastor doesn't have it all together. That's the beauty of his body. Connect to people. Can I say this? We, I just mentioned a few minutes ago that January 17th and 24th is an opportunity for you. If you've been struggling, if you've been feeling like you're isolated and you don't have anybody to connect with, I'm here to tell you, Grow Church, we, are, we will be very intentional about helping to change that. Now, I can't, we, can't make, we can't force you to sign up for a group. I'm not going to go over to you and drag you to the kiosk and say, you're going to sign up for a group. I'm not going to do that. You're an adult. But when you see the value in it, when you see how, how intentionally we, intentional we are about helping you live a full life, maybe you'll just, just maybe you'll download that app, that church center app, and you'll sign up for a group. Just maybe you'll connect with other people and, and not walk through life isolated and alone. Is this helping anybody today? So our spring semester of groups is coming up. Take advantage of that. Be a part of that. Number three, exercise. That's a popular one, isn't it? This time of year, though, you know what, you know what the big, you know, people who own gyms, they love this time of year, don't they? Why? Because everybody's made their New Year's resolutions, and everybody's going to the gym, and by February... They're still, paying that, they're still paying that monthly membership because they committed to it, right? But they ain't been. Whoa, whoa, where'd that go? Whoa, all right. But do you see how valuable it is? Because you're, the, way you're, the way you feel, your body impacts here. You, you heard me talk about stress and obesity and diabetes. You know that, that exercising can help all of those? Every time you're, you're, you're working out or, or running, stress decreases. Cholesterol goes down. You can manage diabetes just by simply making that investment of, and it doesn't have to be the gym. It doesn't. There's so many resources out there right now. You can go on YouTube. You can, you can order all kinds of stuff. There's, there's all kinds of websites where you can do full body workouts. I mean, there's the HIIT workout is real popular right now, right? Anybody heard of that? It's like 15 or 20 minutes of really intense exercise, and it burns. Uh, how many calories does it burn, Nathan? Typically, five, five six hundred maybe. I mean, it's, it's a, it gets your body going. And we've been, we're, as a matter of fact, one of our classes, our groups this semester is Nathan's uh, fitness group. Just saying, that one ought to be that one ought to be like 50 people in that one, right? Eat right. Now, this is the one your pastor struggles with. Okay. Can I tell you, I'm just being real with you right now. I love a good hamburger. Anybody like good hamburgers? Nothing like cheeseburger bobbies. But as I'm thinking about this, as, as good as it is to right here, it tastes good, but it's not good for me. It's not contributing to my full life in Christ. And so what does Lance Turner have to do? I'm talking to Lance Turner right now, by the way, okay? Can y'all give me a minute? You're making investments in you, in your physical body. Did I mention that what happens to your physical body impacts your mental health? And so, fueling your body with the right things can help reduce the stress that we're talking about. It can help reduce the, the hypertension. It can help reduce the diabetes. All of these heart disease. All these things that we, we struggle with as a nation. Obesity, you know, obesity is the number one killer right now. Why? Because we've gotten off track. And I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching at me, really, okay? Number five, get adequate sleep. This is another struggle for me. I have to take melatonin. If I don't, I'm awake at three in the morning. Some of you know because you see my, my Facebook posts, right? 
I'm sitting reading, and I'm, I'm having posting things because I'm awake at 3, three in the morning. So I, I can say melatonin has helped me considerably. I've been taking that every night. But we need that. Why? Because your brain has to have a, a way to recalibrate and rejuvenate itself. And those cycles of sleep are for that. God, listen, did I mention to you God created you as an amazing machine? Your body has an ability to rejuvenate if, folks, if we'll make the right investments. Here's the last one. No, there's actually two more. Sorry. Practice gratitude. What better way to shift your focus than to begin, become thankful for the things that are in your life? Here's what 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 18 says. I love this because this doesn't give us one out at all, right? It says, be thankful in how many circumstances? Okay, when, when there's COVID-19 and, the, and it seems like our, our uh, political leaders have gone off the, off the deep end or our families have gone off the deep end or whatever, it doesn't say if you're not facing those things, what does it say? In all circumstances, do what? Give thanks. Why? Because you belong to Christ. Again, it's a reminder to you that he's in control. It's a reminder to you that God's got this. So what I do, it's my job is to focus on the things I can just thank God for. And so I begin to, you just begin to make a list. Can we do that right now? Lord, thank you for my family. Thank you for my relationship with Jesus. Can anybody say thank you that Christ came and lived a sinless life and died on the cross to purchase your freedom? Can we say thank you right now to that? Take a minute right now and thank God for salvation. Lord, I thank you. Thank you that you redeemed us. Thank you that you saved us. That's not all you're thankful for. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful that I have a beautiful wife who puts up with me. You know, she told me the other day I'm difficult at times. I found that hard to believe. <laughs> thankful for her. Thankful for my two sons. Thankful for you. I'm thankful for this awesome church that we have. Where people can come and they can discover full life. Is it a blessing? I hope you, I, listen, I hope you see your church as a blessing. Because it is. Go to some places. Take some, I'm not wanting you to go a lot, but go, find, go look at other places. You go in there and it's like, it's like somebody died in there. Folks, I never want it to be that when you come in here to worship God, you ever feel like there was a death. I want, you always want you leaving inspired by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Be thankful in all circumstances. Make a list. Sit down and write it out every single morning what you're grateful for. And I guarantee you, your attitude will change. Your perspective will change. Because you're focusing on the right things. There's a lot to be thankful for. Amen? Can, can anybody honestly say, there's a lot to be thankful for right now? Turn to your person beside you. Hopefully it's just a significant person in your life and say, I'm thankful for you. Go ahead and tell them. You better mean it, though. You better mean it. Last one. Practice your spiritual gifts. God created you on purpose for purpose. He's given you something you're good at. I was reading this week. There's something that you're good at that nobody else is that good at it. Right? There's a discovery that has to be made on that. You can continue to, to experiment and discover that. But here, once you discover that, once you realize that you're, you're created on purpose for purpose, that God's given you some gifts, use them. Use them. If you're a great musician, use it. If you're a great singer, use it. If you're technologically savvy, use it. If you love kids, use it. If, you, if you're friendly at the door and you have a smile on your face and you make people feel welcome, if you could work at Chick-fil-A and thrive, use it. Amen. If you're a great Bible teacher, use it. Because there's nothing better than getting outside of yourself and serving somebody else. Right? 
Because when I'm so focused on me and woe is me and, and I'm, I'm disconnected from everybody and blah, 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 and, and just depression and anxiety come. No, when I say, you know what? God's given me something. I'm going to serve. That's why I want to make another pitch for never alone this weekend. What an opportunity. And you don't have to, some, have, to have some great spiritual gift to put a box in a car. I'm sorry. You, I mean, God, you know, and maybe you say that, Pastor, that's not my spiritual gift. You could, anybody can take a box and put it in a car. Amen. Is that, is that hard for anybody? And it might be functional exercise, right, Nathan? Do it the right way. Using the right muscles. You understand what I'm saying? So, folks, get outside of yourself. Don't have the pity party. Get outside of yourself. Use your spiritual gift to serve somebody else. And I guarantee you, something will change in your mind. So all of these things I mentioned to you today contribute to full life in Christ. They're investments. But the most important thing that I need to reiterate is that this journey that you're on to be, full life, be fully alive in Christ has to start with placing your faith in Christ. Thank you for tuning in to our online broadcast here at Grow Church. We hope that you've heard something today that will strengthen and encourage you throughout the week. Make sure you tune in next week for our next broadcast. God bless.